Okay, so what what happens is I come in here to my office. I know it's a holiday, but I, it was going to be quiet, so I thought I'd get some work done. I come into the office, and I, I really think somebody's been in here while I've been gone. Yeah, I, it, it just gives me, it just kind of gives me the willies, you know? I mean, you leave you leave for a little while, and somebody comes into your space. I don't I don't think that's really, really safe. So just beef up the security a bit for me around here, will you? All right, thank you. Bye. You know, you just have to keep on top of things these days. You just, you, you just have to. There is no downtime anymore. You got to be really careful about your space and these things and all the. Oh, by the way, welcome to episode eight of the 411. I'm Lee Sterry. I shall be your host as per usual. We are fueled by Gales Gas Bars Limited. We are powered by WeStream. We are hosted by Fiddler's Poor House, where we will be in just a few seconds. We are partnered with Niagara 411. A whole litany of partners and credits to uh, put forward today. And we've got a full program. We've got some, sorry, I'm not supposed to touch the outside, but it was slipping down. Yeah, we were told this week, don't forget to put it over your nose. So. Uh, we have quite a full show today. We have a bunch of guests that are coming in, very interesting people. We've had uh, an announcement made about back to school stuff for September from uh, the Ontario government this week, so that's news. We're going to uh, continue our um, check on some Niagara cleanup initiatives that are going on. We have a really feel good story for you a little later on in the program. And uh, just a whole litany of things, as I mentioned, that we're going to chat about. What we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go in here to uh, Fiddler's Poor House, get set up, and uh, tell you how you can join the program. Come on in. Okay. This is absolutely a spectacular day in uh, Niagara. We've got uh, really low humidity, and uh, but it's nice, warm summer day. Couldn't be, uh, couldn't be better. I'm going to get rid of this thing so that... Uh, Kevin can get me sorted out and fixed up and wired in and clued in because I'm usually clueless. So that will be uh, that will be a good thing, so that we can uh, hear you when you call in. Don't want to step on cords, and we'll uh, we'll get settled here. Every now and then the cloud passes over the sun uh, in front of the sun, and it's uh, it cools it down a little bit, which is uh, nice. But we are here in the lovely window setting of uh, Fiddler's Poor House. We'll set the mask over here. We'll do our due diligence with the, uh, with the hand sanitizer because as I already mentioned, I think people have been uh, in my office while I was away. So you, you, you can never be too careful. Uh, again, welcome to episode number eight. And there's some, there's some great news right there to kick off the program with. And that is the fact that, uh, and I think surprisingly so, considering some of the things that have been happening over the last few weeks, um, zero, 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 new cases today. Now, that would have been yesterday. These are Sundays and Saturdays stats, just to, in, in the interest of full disclosure. Uh, zero new cases yesterday in Niagara. The growth rate, zero percent. Uh, new cases yesterday, and this, of course, means Saturday is also zero. Now that is absolutely phenomenally positive news and like I said a little bit unexpected because after that uh, display of uh, Clifton Hill area that we had on last Monday that video that went viral with all of the people wandering around Clifton Hill and uh, either maskless or too close together or both then uh, I was expecting, frankly, uh, a bit of a spike. Now, there's always the possibility that the people that were in that video were from someplace else, and a lot of them no doubt were, may, uh, from outside Niagara, and uh, if that's the case, maybe they uh, took whatever infections they had back with them, which, uh, for us, is a, is a good idea. Our first guest today uh, is going to be touching on that subject. We'll get a bit of an update, but we have some other, and we'll talk about uh, bringing him on in, uh, in just a bit. Uh, we have some other folks coming on the program today. There was a lady, uh, Sherry Lynn. We'll just use first names, it's easier that way. Sherry Lynn was at uh, Giant Tiger on Welland Avenue in St. Catharines and witnessed a heartwarming scene there and she is going to be sharing her story
coming up a little bit after 11 o'clock today. We're going to welcome uh, uh, Crystal Caputo back to the program uh, as well. We talked with Crystal a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the stress of parents with children and great expectations as far as an announcement with regard to children returning to school so that parents could get their lives back in order and continue to work uh, in a gainfully employed position, whatever it is that, that, that they do. So uh, those announcements came out this past week and we'll chat with Crystal about that. We'll chat with her about masks and uh, whatever else is on her mind today. And uh, she, of course, is one of our regular uh, contributors here on the 411. She's out of Niagara Falls. So we look forward to chatting with Crystal about 1045 today. And um, also, there's a, a young lady by the name of Birdine that has started a new Facebook page. And it's, uh, it, it's called the, let me get it right, the Plastic Bag Project. And uh, it's a, kind of a clean up after yourself and others sort of project. We were chatting with Gary Wilkins a couple, uh, last week about uh, the litter and et cetera that is happening uh, through the gorge and around Niagara and the Whirlpool area. And well, pretty much any, anywhere you're going to find tourists tramping around or hiking, you're going to find that stuff, unfortunately. So uh, this plastic bag project is something that is uh, brand new and it's intended to address that situation. So we'll, we'll chat with Birdine. Hopefully she's going to check in somewhere around 11 o'clock today. Now let's go uh, to give you a little bit of background on our first guest who's going to be coming up in just a few minutes. His name is Nigel. He does a regular blog. It's called Nigel's Cheap Vlogs. And they don't look very cheap, but they're uh, pretty nifty productions actually. And Nigel is in Niagara. And this is his video. This is his video, Kev? Okay. So, Kevin Jack, by the way, is who I'm um, yapping to. He is the uh, power behind WeStream, who powers this program on yeah, live so stream. You nailed it. This is, uh, this is Nigel's cheap vlog, and this is Clifton Hills, Saturday night, just two nights ago. Yeah. Because what we wanted to do was actually get an update on how things were going on Clifton Hill from two weeks ago because we were concerned as to whether the mayor's new project, the, the, the green shirts, uh, et cetera, would, would work in, uh, in assisting crowd control, uh, distancing, masks, and that sort of thing. That is Nigel. He's going to be joining us uh, in just a few minutes and chat about his experiences down there. But this is uh, part of the blog that he uh, put up on uh, Saturday. Late, 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 late Saturday. It's jam down there, Lee. Yeah. It is jam. Yeah. And if you pay close attention, and I know Nigel will give us his view, there's not a lot of masks. Not as many as I'd like to see, and there is zero physical distance. Especially after that first video went viral like uh, uh, two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. I would have. Ex I, I don't see that many of the yellow shirts. I see the odd one. Um, what is it they have? Uh, I forget what the, what the slogan is that the shirts are supposed uh, to have. Crush on. the curve? Crush the curve or something like that, yeah. So, and I don't see, I don't see a whole lot of uh, goodwill ambassadors wandering around down there controlling the crowds. There's one of those shirts right there. So, yeah. So, uh, Nigel of Nigel's Cheap Videos is going to be joining us in just a couple of minutes. He's in our green room waiting room at the moment. Now, before we get there, I do want to mention that you can join the program when we are between guests. Of, we have a, a number of guests today, as I mentioned, but when we're between guests, you have a comment to make, you have something you want to bring up, uh, an opinion on anything or some information on, uh, on anything at all, whether we're talking about it at the time or not, you can s definitely check in. You're watching it on Livestream Niagara or Niagara 411. Nick is, uh, is also live streaming this uh, show for us today. And you can just click on the link at the bottom of the post on either one of those streams and it will take you into our Zoom Room green room and then uh, Kevin will 
uh, do what he does, work his magic, and get you onto the screen with us, and you can uh, you can have your way with the program for a while. If you already have the Zoom app on your device, all you have to do is dial the number that is on the left side of your screen, 905-411-0411, and that will also link you right in here in a hurry. want to thank Gales Gas Bars Limited for continuing to, su to uh, support the program. Great partnership. Uh, the Gales Rewards Program is something you want to check out at gales.ca. We are also going to be over the coming weeks focus in on a number of the charities that they are involved with in Niagara and they are many. So uh, just wanted to make, make mention of that. This being a holiday Monday, some people have been uh, a little bit out of reach, but we'll, you know, when we get back to work, when you get, we're already working, but uh, when everybody else gets back to work, we'll do more of those in subsequent Mondays to come. I hope you have a nice family day. I hope you're able to spend a bit of it with us. And uh, don't forget, if you can, if you have to go out, you can always come back to Livestream Niagara and watch the program at any time at all, because they are, uh, they are archived for all time. They are a part of uh, history. And, uh, well, that's kind of scary. But there you go. It is what it is. I hope your mask wearing is going well. All right, we're going to bring Nigel in here right now, as promised, because uh, he's been uh, out and about and uh, looking, uh, looking all over Niagara. Nigel, welcome to the program. Hi, Lee. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Um, I was doing all right until the wasp just showed up and keeps flying around my head. So if you see me acting silly, I got two wasps just flying around. Were, were they killer wasps? I see you're wearing their t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, they may be the art. I think they're after my coffee, actually. <laughs> Maybe I'll just throw that in the car. <laughs> so, Nigel, first of all, uh, yeah. before we get into the, the meat of the story, tell us a little bit uh, about you. You live in Niagara. You are obviously originally from somewhere in the UK um, because of the accent. I'm so smart that way. <laughs> Um, but uh, tell us a little bit about you. What what are you all about? All right. Uh, well, first of all, I, tell I am English. Um, I'm from Manchester originally, but I grew up in a place called Cornwall in England. So I grew up on the coast, a very similar setting to this, actually. I live right by the sea mm. in a fishing town, which is just beautiful. So that's why I love this area so much. I now live in the Ridgeway Crystal Beach area. Okay. And this is where I do most of my videos from. And uh, that's basically it. I just it's a, it's a great area to live. I've uh, been in Canada for nearly 20 years, and if I hadn't have moved down to this area, I think I might have gone somewhere else. But this is just probably one of the best places I've come to. So do you have a day job other than uh, Nigel's cheap vlogging? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I have a professional job. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what that is because <laughs> people might come and track me down. So for, for, for safety reasons and for the company protocol, I just don't give that out. Okay. <laughs> well, people who know me know where I work, okay? Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, for somebody that needs to keep things secret, you have quite a profile. So <laughs> I don't know how I, good I'm a job. I'm always in trouble one way or another. I don't, I don't like, know how good a job you're doing at that. But, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's your business. Uh, right. So let's talk about uh, your most recent vlog, and we just showed snippets of it. Um, you spent your time in Clifton Hill, and it was a timely one because we here on our program were waiting to see how things evolved since that viral video went out that was just ridiculous with the people down on Clifton Hill. So tell us about your experience while you were putting this together. All right, well, first of all, I went down there. Uh, the last video I did prior to that was on the 14th of July, which is a Tuesday in the middle of the afternoon. I'd gone down there. I walked through Clifton Hill. Then I went down to the Falls, Table Rock, did a few shoots. And I also did a bit on the uh, uh, Maid of the Mist and the Hornblower, which also made a, a silly TikTok, which went kind of viral. It's got like 200,000 views now. Yeah. And, uh, and literally, it was about a week after that, the media started picking these stories up as well. Then the, after that video I did on the 14th, I had quite a few people leaving comments for me saying, I've got to get down there on a Saturday night. You've got to go on a Saturday. And uh, lo and behold, I didn't make it that particular Saturday. And someone, someone else did. <laughs> and yeah. uh, they got a viral video of it, which is great for them. And it highlighted the issues. So I let that one play out, see how it went. And um, as time went on, I thought, you know what? I've got to go down. I've, I've driven past it a few times after coming home from work. Just wanted to check it out. So I went down. This past Saturday, I think I was there between 10.15 and 10.45. I was only there for 30 minutes. Just literally parked up, uh, found a place just uh, the back near the casino. It was like five bucks. And I just had a little walk around, had a video shoot. And I was literally in and out in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't see any difference. I really didn't. Compared to the other guy's video that was posted uh, two weeks ago, 
I've not seen anything different. The crowd may have been a little bit smaller, and that might have had something to do with the weather earlier on in the day. I think we did have a bit of rain, which may have sent some people home. And I was also there a good, a good hour later than what he did his video. Um, but just walking around, there was lots of clusters of people. Um, there's no social distancing, physical distancing, and stuff like that. Um, the, the mask issue, he went through clusters of seeing people with masks, and then all of a sudden there were no masks. And, and we all know the guidelines is if you can't if you can't physical distance, have a mask at hand basically, yeah. just put it on. And there was many areas in that little section I was walking around where you couldn't even possibly social distance. And there was there's just no there's no effort being made by most people. It was like they just come down here and they forget everything that's going on around them, and they just think to themselves, "I'm on holiday, I don't care, and I'm just going to do this." And that's that's the way I see it. So. I wasn't really there to have a go at these people who are walking around Clifton Hill in Niagara Falls. I mean, it's a great place. I mean, it is a tourist town. We need the tourists. But my, my argument is basically aimed at the government's misinformation and the confusing information, which is telling people one thing, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. Then we see people coming down and doing the opposite and completely disregarding everything that's being said to them. And at the same time, we're hearing stories of people who can't attend funerals, they can't go to a wedding, mm -hmm. uh, they can't go and see loved ones in certain places in bigger groups. But it's okay for several hundred people uh, to congregate in small areas outdoors like Clifton Hill, which basically on a really calm day is like being in an indoor mall recently, really. It's all closed in, uh, it's all very yeah. close together. And with all the lights on, sometimes you forget you're outside when you walk around these places sometimes. That is indeed true, and it, Clifton Hill has always been like that. It's, uh, as you say, uh, it's almost like uh, there is no through street, although there is. Cars do just just for fun, and I don't know why, try to inch their way up or down Clifton Hill, and it takes uh, forever sometimes because there's always people in the way. But uh, what is your take on the, uh, on the attempt to create some crowd control with the with with the green shirts or yellow shirts whatever color that is <laughs> well I, I saw the video you, uh, you showed on the last week's show uh, of the uh, like the press conference they did by the big wheel yeah and you know you have all these people in the shirts and there's no tourists around whatsoever so I was like oh that makes it look safe but uh, in realistic terms once you get to like 5 6 p.m we all know Clifton Hill it gets, becomes really really busy and it's, it's totally different in the evening than it is in the daytime it comes alive and when I was there I think I saw one person with a yellow shirt on which I didn't know at the time uh, was one of the ambassadors and she was stood quite closer to Boston Pizza in the video up against the wall talking to someone I did catch that later on and someone highlighted there was someone else in the video but I didn't see anyone coming out and actually speaking direct with people or saying hey you know what you want to separate a little bit when I went to the uh, walk past the wheel there the uh, Niagara wheel I mean the markings are on the floor and no one was really paying attention to him. And then the little arcade further on, I know a lot of them were kids, but a lot of families were all pushed together. And you couldn't even really see the signs on the floor because there's so many people standing over them. Do you think it's even possible to regulate an area like that? What, just from your experience, what, what could be done to make it any better? Any ideas? I don't think they can really. I, I, I think because it's an outdoor place. And it's not like say it's not like a mall or a theme park where you can actually walk in and they can limit how many people come in. Uh, so they're going to have that problem. It's no different here. I'm just by a uh, beach just over here, and mm -hmm. they have their beach just open for local residents only. So uh, their limit is 2,000 people. They can regulate that, uh, but you can't do that at Clifton Hill. You can't regulate how many people are actually going to come in and um, walk around and do things. And, and not only that, when I was walking around Clifton Hill. Apart from people picking up garbage working, I saw, enough, I saw an overcleaning taking place, especially by the little arcade by the raceway track. I stood there for a good five minutes watching things, and they were very limited how many people went in, but they're all touching the machines, the slot machines, the glass, the kids and the adults, yeah. uh, but no one was going around wiping things down, and I made that point quite clear. When it comes to COVID, uh, believe it or not, the, the droplets are usually being picked up from touch surfaces just by if it drops, if you, if you cough or whatever, you touch a surface and someone touches that very quickly after. That's where it's getting, the contamination really comes from right. more than anything. Okay, uh, Nigel, we really appreciate you coming on the program and the information. Great work on, uh, on the vlogs, by the way. Um, I what, appreciate it. What, what, was your, uh, what was your motivation for, for starting the Niagara Cheap <laughs> vlog thing? How did that get going? Well, 
Uh, I started literally, it's probably exactly about 12 months ago now, my uh, my stepdaughter challenged me to a YouTube video, because I was, I was taking, I was like moaning about TikTok, she goes, I'll challenge you to a YouTube video, you can get the most views, so I made a video just of my dogs, and I beat her, and I thought, you know what, I kind of like doing this stuff, because I used to DJ, I DJed for a very long time, um, from my, when I was the age of 14 years old, and I also did internet radio for like 8 years, uh, until about 2 years ago, uh, so I've always been inclined to like get my voice out there, and speak my mind, and uh, I'm just not afraid to go out there and speak to people and speak my mind. And at Christmas, I made the decision, I think it was a New Year's Day, I was walking around Niagara Falls, and I said, you know what, I'm going to make a start doing a more uh, a Niagara-based theme vlog. Uh, I'm still relatively new to the region. I want to go out and explore it. And that was my theme, to go out and call it This Is Niagara, the, the playlist, uh -huh. and me going exploring Niagara Falls. Uh, but unfortunately, COVID started in March, and I think I got two videos out before then. Then with my, my wife is a nurse, so we, we, we kind of very much know about COVID very much. Uh, and she's worked with COVID patients already herself. So I kind of went, you know what? This is pretty serious, regardless how you take it. And I can put my own spin on it. Uh, I won't say spin, that's probably not the right word. <laughs> but I can put my own opinion to it. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't want to sound like certain media. Uh, so yeah, I can put my, my own thoughts into it, but also let people have their own opinions of it as well. So I, it, this is my, my opinion is not gospel, but it opens up a discussion. And I've actually replied to most of the people who've replied to on the comments in my on the YouTube page, and even on the 411 when I get time, there's so many comments on there, it just take a while. But I try and I try and read as many as I can and get back to people just so I've acknowledged them. Uh, and it's just and there's a lot of people share the same opinion. They really do. And uh, it is it is serious times. I get both parts of the argument. Mm -hmm. We've got to try and open the economy. Uh, we need to get people back to work. But when you get conflicting information coming from the government continuously, and then we see. Thousands of people in Niagara Falls, and I, I'm going to go. I'm going to be pretty bold here. A lot of those people are probably still off work collecting surf and having a party right now. And it's like, if, if you go into Toronto, Mississauga, those parking lots, uh, Go Transit, are empty. So no one's going into Toronto still working, but they're all coming down here to party. Absolutely. So it's like there's a bit of a contradiction going on here. And uh, since uh, Toronto, uh, Peel, Mississauga, those areas opened up to Phase Three this weekend, they're getting out even more and. Uh, from uh, conversations I had with people that were traveling from there to here, the traffic it was just unbelievable. So there are yeah. a lot of visitors coming into Niagara, yeah. no question. And you know they're oh, not commute. you know they're not going so, over the border because they can't go over the border. So they're coming here. Well, that's correct. I, I commute daily uh, into Hamilton, uh, back to here, and I'm usually coming back around about 6 p.m. And as soon as you get to about Friday evening, uh, the traffic on a Friday this past weekend was no different than the Friday. Uh, last Ju last July and August, it, 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 it was crazy busy. I mean, I know it's a long weekend, but it was really, really busy. It's a crawl all the way from just past the Skyway, going through Fruitland. Uh, you make your way through Grimsby, then it picks up. Then as soon as you get to like the 405 split, it kind of dissipates. And once you get past 420 Stanley, there's no one left. It's like, you know yeah. where everyone went? They went Niagara on the lake or Niagara Falls. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Nigel, thank you uh, very hey, much no uh, from Manchester, the home of Coronation Street, <laughs> via, <laughs> uh, via the coast of England to uh, the coast of Lake Erie. That's awesome. Uh, appreciate you joining the 411. Hopefully we get you back no sometime. Problem. And uh, good, luck with, good luck with the vlogs. All right. Thanks very much. And thanks for watching. And uh, stay safe, guys. Appreciate Cheers. it. Okay. Bye. Had to get the plug in for Coronation Street or my wife would kill me. Okay, uh, so, <laughs> so um, there you go. Not much change at all. There was, uh, there was also a story that we can get to a little bit more in detail about people climbing the fence or going through a hole in the fence at Deque Falls. And again, I'm not going to get into it because we don't really have all that much time to do it right now. But and to go to Nigel's point, uh, misinformation, but there are still rules in place. There are still things uh, in place that dictate how we are supposed to act. And this is a rhetorical question because there really is no specific answer. But uh, I was mentioning it to my colleague Kevin here before the program, wondering, my question was, when did it become the norm to not pay any attention to the rules? And uh, I think we've still got some uh, audio, or is that just me that's got audio coming in? Oh, it might just be you, Lee. Okay. Um, so, go back a, a bit. My question was, when did it become 
okay to just ignore the rules. Now, I realize I'm a bit of a dinosaur, but when I was a kid, I was brought up in the, the mindset that if there is a rule, if there is a, a law, a bylaw, a sign posted, I, I don't care whether it's a federal, provincial, or a private, whatever it is, uh, I was taught that you obey the rules. All right? If it says don't go in here, you don't go in there. It doesn't matter how much you want to go in there, you just don't do it. But that doesn't seem to be in place anymore, Kevin. It's like, uh, oh yeah, well, they they say we can't go in, but the hell with that. Yeah, I'm going in anyway. Is, Lee, but you're bang on. You're absolutely bang on. It's not just you. I'm seeing it as well. And and it, I mean, what, what is society to hell in a handbasket? I'm not sure, but... But I was raised to feel, and I still do at this late stage in my life, I was raised to feel guilty if I broke a rule or broke the law or, or just went against the grain uh, because I wasn't supposed to. I, I, it, it just makes me feel you're, uncomfortable. You're a part of society, and anybody that does it is just making one selfish act after another selfish act. And it's it just, uh, I don't know when that became okay. The, 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 the mass thing on Clifton Hill, the distancing on Clifton Hill. No, nobody likes it. Everybody wants to have a good time. People want to party and get out and enjoy themselves. And to Nigel's point, yeah, there's a lot of people that are probably down there that are, are collecting their $1,000 uh, every couple of weeks or whatever it is, or uh, per month on, uh, on, on the Serb thing and uh, just uh, having, a, having a fine old time. But there's the, there's the story about Deque Falls. Reports of people sneaking in through a hole in the fence. Ruins parking lot is overflowing with people. Uh, cars are parked on side roads. And, and again, they are absolutely not deterred by parking tickets. We touched on this last week as well, I think. 20 bucks for a parking ticket, even if it's 30 bucks, for whatever. Uh, they're used to paying more than this to go to any event anywhere around the GTA. So it's not a big, the, the fine is not a deterrent. It's not keeping them out. Uh, the thing that should keep them out is their own sense of cooperation with their fellow human beings on this planet and follow the damn rules. I ju I, sorry, I just, don't, I just don't get it. Because it ends up costing us all money in the long run. People that don't follow the rules when they're skiing need to be rescued or they die. People that don't follow the rules when they're in the gorge or the whirlpool area need to be rescued or they get seriously injured or both. Uh, why? Because they're not doing things the way they're supposed to be doing them. And it's very, in, in these days of mass communication and massive platforms, diverse platforms uh, of information that is available, there is absolutely no reason for you to go anywhere today without being prepared for what you're about to see or experience when you get there. No reason on God's green earth. So I, I just, and, 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 People that, like that sign at Q Falls with people trying to go through the fence and everything, throwing their backpacks over and going to go for a hike, and they just anger me so much. Uh, and uh, I, I think it, uh, it, it is a reflection on, uh, on their character more than it is a reflection on anybody else that's making the rules. There's a rescue right there. Uh, that is a picture that was sent to me over the past week by uh, our guests from, uh, from last week. Gary Wilkins, uh, that is an actual rescue taking place down in the gorge, in the Whirlpool area in the gorge. And his message to me along with that picture was, Lee, it's getting out of hand. And it truly, it truly is. I don't know the answer to stopping it, but uh, at some point in time, you have to have some personal honor and integrity. But that seems to be in very short supply these days, at least within the group that is visiting Niagara to do whatever they want to do. It's very easy to just, you know, blame millennials and say the new kids don't get it. Gary was saying when he joined us last week that a lot of it was selfie-driven, Instagram-driven. Yeah. I know it says that I can't go beyond this point, but I just need that one selfie. There's people of all generations, too. I'm, I, I, I hesitate to make it a generational thing because that's just, that's just generalizing something that is across the board problem. All the, all the people down on Clifton Hill were not millennials. There were families down there with kids in, in, in strollers, for heaven's sake. So, uh, and the same thing happens in, in the gorge. The same thing happens at Deque Falls. These people aren't all in one demographic. Now, what do it's you do about it, Lee? What do you do? I mean, these are the conversations we're having. At the same time, it's stage three. 
All the businesses on Clifton Hill yeah. are private businesses. These people need to make a buck. They've been shut down for three or four months. So, of course, they're going to open their doors, and they just want the cash to flow in. Yeah, and I understand that. I mean, we sympathize with that or empathize with that, I guess, is, is a more appropriate word. I don't know. And, and to go to Nigel's point, is it enforceable? Is it, is it doable? Is it controllable? It sure looks like it isn't. And... Um, I, I don't know what the answer is. I, I don't think you can put everything at the feet of the, the city of Niagara Falls. I don't think you can put everything at the seat of the regional uh, police. Uh, I mean, they can't, you can't put 40 officers down on Clifton Hill on a, on a Saturday night. Uh, it's just, it's, it's not feasible. Yeah. And people say, like, well, close the roads. Well, then the pedestrians will just fill the roads. Yeah. Yeah. Well, close the city-owned parking lots. Well, there's privately-owned parking lots. And, well, apparently, and right apparently it doesn't matter because people park where they're not supposed to park anyway. Absolutely. It, the, the, you, know what, you know what would happen? You'd end up with people leaving their cars somewhere in the lawn in Victoria Park. You know, they just, they, just pull off the, they just pull off the road and leave the car. Get a ticket and move on. So getting back to your point, Lee, when did that become acceptable? I don't know. I, I don't know. When was it I okay? I see it all the time. Uh, is it is is it starting with, with young people that uh, you know feel? Is, do parents just say, "Well, you can oh let him go, he'll be fine." I don't I don't know. Is it, where does the discipline stop that it becomes a problem when people get older? I I don't know. Again, you don't want to place the, the any sort of blame at, at always at the foot of parents uh, or authority figures. Maybe it's the fact that there isn't enough discipline in schools these days. It could it could because I remember. That once again, I hate to say that because you know, yeah, you're you're a dinosaur. Forget it; those days are gone. I get it; they are gone. But there was some charm to it in the fact that you had two sets of parents. You had a set of parents at home, and you had a set of parents at school, and they talked to each other, and they usually agreed with each other. Now, if a kid gets into trouble at school, the the parents are are on the horn to the school, yelling at them for treating little Johnny or Mary unfairly. You're bang on there, Lee, and I don't know that that's the root of the problem, but I've seen that trend. It's weird. When I was growing up, if I came home and complained to my parents about something that happened at school, to a fault, my parents would side by the teachers, the school yeah. board, the administration, or the other adults involved. Even when I knew that the adults were wrong, my parents would always <laughs> side by the administration and say, no, yeah. they were right. Because they make the rules and then and then that then it became the golden rule switch to he who has the gold makes the rules so uh, which is kind of a twist on the original but again these are all rhetorical questions history evolves uh, and the future morphs in, into things that people of older generations don't recognize and yet it happens all over again. When the people that are uh, 25 to 40 right now, when they're 60 to 75, they're gonna look back and say, what the heck is going on today? When I was a kid. So it, it's, it happens every generation. But in this case, uh, it's, it's not healthy for our environment. It's not healthy for our society. And, uh, and my really serious concern is that the social integrity of the individual seems to be lacking in a in a lot of areas you can't enforce you you, you can't physically enforce every bylaw or every rule that is in place so you have to at some time take personal accountability for it don't you a little bit even a little bit i think so um and yet lee somehow with all the masses on clifton hill with everything going askew at DeCue, we find ourselves over the weekend charging back-to-back -back days of zero new COVID cases. Yeah, so that sort of shoots our argument right, right down uh, to the ground as far as cases in Niagara are concerned. The people visiting Clifton Hill, where were they from? When they left Clifton Hill to go back home, did they leave something behind that's going to catch up with this or did they take something back with them that's going to affect the communities that they actually live in? Don't know. Again, rhetorical questions, but there you go. As of yesterday, when it says today, that meant Sunday. And when it says yesterday, it means Saturday. But zero cases yesterday, zero cases Saturday, 0% growth rate, um, all phenomenal numbers. It's exactly where we want it to be. 
And um, so it's almost like we're spitting into the wind when we're trying to tell people to be more, uh, more responsible about what they're doing. These numbers, um, they can turn to these numbers and say, hey, <laughs> everything's fine. We're good. We're okay. Well, we'll see. Uh, it just, and you know what? Even if that's even if that's true, it does not negate the fact that there are restrictions and regulations in place. Obey them, even if you think they're stupid, just because you should. There's an old way of thinking, eh? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people think that well, it's just me, and the reality is, it's like well, yeah, if it's just one person, but if we all decided to break the rules, yeah. then it would be chaotic. Yeah. So it's not just you; it's about all of us adhering, and speaks to the life we're living now, where there's a mutual trust amongst Canadians that we are going to physical distance. Yeah. Because if we're not all in this together, we're going to have our butts kicked back to stage two or stage one before we know it. And a lot of us are relying on progressing in stage three, maintaining health, seeing what we can do as a safe society to get back to some sort of normalcy. And economically, uh, it's a boondoggle. We've got uh, billions of dollars, not to put too fine a point on it or exaggerate, literally billions of dollars that we're going to be handing over to our younger people uh, to handle in the future. We're not gonna pay billions of dollars back by uh, 2022. It, it, it's a debt that's gonna hang over us for a long time in this country and around the world for that matter. And uh, guess who has to deal with that debt? And the less responsible we are, the more the problem uh, is exacerbated, the longer it takes to solve it, the price tag keeps going up, and eventually there are going to be generations that are, are, are saddled with that price tag. It's happening right now. So who knows what budgets are going to look at? They look like going forward. Talk about defunding the police and changing around municipal budgets. Boy, I, would, I wouldn't want to be a politician trying to come out with a budget that's going to get me elected anytime soon. With, with, with all, and that goes for municipalities as, as well as regions, as well as provinces and the feds for that matter. So it's, it's a multi-headed monster we've got going here. And uh, that was just my question that started this <laughs> complicated conversation, was when did obeying the rules become not fashionable? And I guess they, that's it. We've got some people chiming in here via comments at Niagara 411. If you can see them there, Cindy and Randy, they're yeah, right on point. Totally hear you. Raised the same way. People today think they have their rights to do as they want. Let's face it, there is no respect anymore. Well, there certainly is less, Randy. Uh, how about people just do... As they're asked. As they're asked, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Again, we're all asking these rhetorical questions and they're head scratchers. It is uh, absolutely impossible to tell. Uh, we have a guest coming up around 1045-ish today. She was on the program a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about a, a topic that was really, really uppermost on uh, parents' minds, parents of uh, school-age children. Uh, and that is what the heck is going to happen in September with back to school. And there were a number of things that were being debated. Is it going to be a hybrid situation where it's part online, part face-to-face? Uh, -face? Are we going to have alternate days? Or are we going to go full-blown uh, back to school five days a week uh, just with uh, more teachers, more space, fewer children in the classroom? That seems to be the way it's going to go. That was the announcement that the Ford government came out with, that it's, uh, it's back to school and back to work. And uh, that's really, in my opinion, good news. We'll see how that, we'll see how that works out. But we'll get, uh, I'm, I'm not in that category, uh, but uh, Kevin Jack is, uh, Crystal Caputo is, and she chatted with us, as I mentioned, a couple of weeks ago, and we're going to bring her on to chat about that and some other things. Uh, Mass, get her take on what she's doing right now. And there's something... Um, uh, th there's something that, uh, what, what is the project that Crystal the said you want to talk about? The 30-day outdoor challenge. The 30 day, yeah, that was it. The 30-day outdoor challenge. I, I, I know nothing about it, but we will as soon as we chat with, uh, with Crystal. And she's coming up in just a few minutes, around 10.45 or so. There was uh, a really uh, interesting story in Allenburg over the, over the last few days uh, and it was one of those really this really had to happen to me here was the the uh, the message that was on Niagara 411 Allenberg Bridge runs over Highway 20 
currently unavailable due to a malfunction. Work is in progress to repair the bridge. Use an alternate route until repaired. Okay, so that's just a, that's a that's a bit of a news story. But this is, uh, yesterday afternoon, like midday. Yeah, but the public interest side of this story is something else again. Um, Elisa says, well, "I'm sorry, Elisa, to to giggle at your expense, but you have to admit it's just like oh my gosh." This sucks. My car's on the other side. I've been here since the boat went through about 45 minutes ago. They let some cars through and my hubby dropped something, so I stopped to get it and they put the arms back down. I'm on one side and him and my son are on the other. And it's closed until they get it fixed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Alicia, I, I, I really am. Uh, but uh, you, have to, you have to admit, that, that's a that's a giggle worthy story. Yeah. Life in Niagara Lee includes getting screwed by the bridge on occasion. On uh, well, sometimes on a regular, on a regular basis. Now, uh, she didn't follow up, did she, as to how quickly they got together, or did she? Uh, yeah, she said in her next post that about two minutes after posting this, she got through and they reopened the bridge. Oh, okay. so the bridge is probably down for about forty five minutes or whatever. So probably long lineups, people you know jockeying yeah. to get around, but. <laughs> Oh, we'll so it wasn't too bad. So then we can laugh. Then that, it was That's funny. a picture, eh? Yeah. That, that was her view of, <laughs> <laughs> of the bridge when she was trapped on one side, family on the other. Okay. Well, it was, it, it was a happy ending, so that's good. <laughs> How is your mask wearing uh, going on these days? Have you returned to work, or do you go into situations where you have to wear it for a prolonged period? Uh, it's a challenge. It, it truly is. And that's one of the things, too, that has... Kevin, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but what is rampant on social media now are stories pro and con mask by so-called experts or people that have done tests. Somebody testing, I saw one uh, earlier in the week, somebody was testing the amount of oxygen that is available uh, without a mask and then with a mask and the, the levels were astoundingly um, negative as far as after the mask goes on, what sort of oxygen you're able to intake. Are these real? Are they, are they sort of manufactured uh, videos or opinions? I, I, I don't know. This person was not, they didn't give any credentials, let's say. I'm Dr. Such and Such from so forth. So, so the negative mask stories, to me, I'm not so sure are as credible because they're often posted by, by amateur people or, or lay people. Most of the pro-mask things that I've seen have actually been posted by doctors or nurses or people that have gone through some sort of exercise while wearing a mask and said, really, it's not that, it's not that big a deal, although it feels like it, it feels uncomfortable, feels like you're not breathing very well, because I, I experience the same thing, believe me. Uh, there's, nothing, there's nothing that feels better than uh, when you're able to, taking that one ear off and going, boy, that feels, uh, that, that cleansing breath feels really good. So I get that part. Uh, but the doctors and the nurses and the, the experts that are supposed to know are saying, it doesn't do you any harm. It's just uncomfortable and it takes some time to get used to. And Lee, doesn't this bring the conversation full circle to what happened to us just abiding by the laws? To me, it doesn't really <laughs> matter what your opinion is on pro-mask, anti-mask, the fact is the powers that be have made a rule, they've weighed all the options, yeah. they've listened to all the experts, and this is the direction we're going. So as soon as they did that, all right, cool, I'm on board. I'm putting my mask on. And I, I don't know who, who's the person out there that's really digging their heels in on this one. Um, I don't know. Uh, probably the same people, the, the flat earthers. They, they, they think the world is flat. Everything is a, is a conspiracy. The seeds that are arriving in your mailbox uh, unexpected are some sort of Chinese plot to, uh, to bring invasive species into the country and destroy our agriculture. Um, you know I said that with tongue-in-cheek, right? Please do not take a chunk of this video and put it up there. <laughs> and now, now Lee, Lee Sterry and, uh, and the 411 are accusing uh, China of uh, agricultural uh, and pesticide sabotage. But no, it's not, not true. Now, again, there is, the other, the, is, there is the other line that says, just because you're paranoid, it doesn't mean they're not out to get you. So you don't know. I, could there be some sort of subterfuge behind some of these things? Sure, but do your own 
research, I think is where it, where it comes down to. Because um, there's, there's so much, to go to Nigel's point earlier, there is so much misinformation out there on everything. And, uh, and it just, um, uh, it, it takes some, some really serious scrutiny before you make up your own mind as to what is the right thing to do, right? Okay, are we ready to go? Crystal Caputo uh, is a, a mom, a citizen, a businesswoman, uh, and uh, a contributor to this program. Crystal, welcome back. How you doing? I'm well, Lee. How are you? Oh, you know what? I didn't put my uh, I didn't put my thing in here. It fell down. Sorry. I'll get you, Lee. All right, thanks. This is uh, this is live radio. Hang on, Crystal. You just sit there and uh, and continue to look really good, and uh, I'll be able to hear you in just a second. What have you been up to, Crystal? Yeah, you can tell everybody else what you've been up to because they can hear you. I can't. Okay. Well, I'm um, kind of been out enjoying the nice weather we've been having. We had some nice reprieve with the rain yesterday, so happy about that. Didn't have to water the garden for a change. Yeah. So that was good. Um, it's. Rinse, recycle, repeat around here since March, really, though. <laughs> um, how about you? What have you been up to, Lee? Uh, well, not, uh, not like you and, uh, and Kevin. I am, uh, I am blessed with not having to deal with young children through this whole COVID thing. I, I was talking to my wife about it. I said, boy, we are so, so fortunate to, to be at the stage of life that we are because while it's inconvenient at some levels, we have, it's for us, comparatively it's simple it's it's simple so my my uh, my heart always goes out to folks like yourself and Kevin and other families trying to get back to work trying to pay the mortgage pay car payments or whatever the heck it is uh, it's a difficult time but there was good news this week uh, it seems like good news you tell me what you think of the of the Ontario back to school plan uh, overall, I was pleased with it. My children are in elementary school, so I know last time we chatted, I was hoping for full-time, back-to-school, regular, in-class teaching. Mm -hmm. um, the only part of it that's disappointing to me is the mandatory masks for grade four and up. Um, I do not think it's practical to expect uh, fourth graders to be able to properly put on a mask, take, take off a mask. Um, I think it's going to be an impediment to learning. I think it's going to, you know, create some fear mongering in the kids. They're already nervous. And yeah. um, based on what I've seen, I mean, you guys were just doing a whole thing back and forth on masks and we'll probably get there as well. But I just don't feel like the science is there to really support it. I mean, you can't get a 10 year old to wash their hands regularly and maintain social distancing and we're expecting them to use a mask properly. It just that part sort of fell flat for me. Um, but hey, we had the blessing of um, the Toronto Sick Kids medical officer that this was the path forward and that it was important for mental health for children to get back in school. So overall, I'm happy. Okay, and um, let, how have you said that the children are already nervous? Are your children a little bit skittish? Um, they're not. They're so only one of my sons is in the age category where he's going to have to wear a mask, and right. he's really not like looking forward to that at all. Um, I think that's going to be the biggest impediment of getting him back to school. Uh, they're not nervous. They know what COVID is. They're like, do we have to go, we go there? Do we have to wear a coronavirus mask? So I haven't taken them anywhere where masks are mandatory. They still sort of just been hanging around at home with us and with our immediate family. But um, it's going to be a hard left for a lot of kids for sure. With regard to the mask thing in the schools, is it your understanding that these children from grade four and up are going to have to wear the mask at all times, like 100% of the time while they're in the classroom? I, I, my understanding is as when they're in the classroom, yes. Um, they're going to have little breaks throughout the day and maybe when they're outside at recess and clearly when they're having snacks and lunch and things like this, it's not practical. But even just the, the process of actually properly hygienically putting on and taking off a mask. Right, yeah. If you've been at the grocery store, half the people aren't even wearing them properly and they're grown adults. I mean, I just think it's a ridiculous expectation for young kids to manage that. Yeah, that's a good point. Kevin, uh, let's bring you in here. You've got uh, children that are gonna be affected by this as well. Yeah, my kids are five and six. And Crystal, one thing that strikes me as odd and it's also heartbreaking is 
how much our children truly understand that there's a pandemic right now, that there's a virus out there. And when I hear my kids say things like, Dad, when this virus is over, are we going to be able to do so and so again? It's just, it's heartbreaking. Are, are your kids kind of the same? Like they have a better understanding of what's going on than we think? And, and does it tear yeah. you in half when you hear them say things like that? I think so I'll take responsibility because at the beginning of this, we were watching news like 24 seven and little ears when you even think they're not paying attention, they're always t paying attention <laughs> and internalizing. So I, I will take responsibility for probably leaving the news on too often when they were in earshot. But I 100 percent agree, Kevin. It's sad, like even taking them out so they want to go to the bird kingdom. Well, we have to wear a mask at the bird kingdom. OK, we'll wait till COVID's over to go back there. And that's not a dig against the bird kingdom. I mean, they're doing what public officials are mandating. Them no, absolutely. I know exactly now. what you mean. It's but a, it's like it changes the experience and they don't want to do it. And I don't blame them. So and, and yeah, it is heartbreaking. And, and that's a huge fear of mine. And I don't know if you feel this way, too, Kevin, but going back to school in the fall, um, it's just it's not going to be normal for them. It's going to be strange. There's already built in fear. So I, I don't know. I don't know where your kids are at, but. I agree. No, I, I hear you. The one thing that's so saddening for me as well is they're five and six years old. So for the ease of math, the five-year-old, well, this pandemic is, let's say, it's you know, it's taken up a year of his life. So 25% of his life has been lived in a bubble with a pandemic. Uh, so this is almost what they have come to expect where we tell them as adults, listen, this is very abnormal. But for them now, this is something that occurs every five years. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. disheartening. And, and I, what you, you totally nailed it when you said in a bubble. I think it's so, we're turning into this society and we've got all this fear on the pandemic and I'm not like saying it's a hoax by any stretch. It's very real and people have died. But to expect us to keep people in a bubble, whether it's adults, children, whatever, it's just unrealistic. Kids get sick. It's what they do. You know, when they're as soon as they went to school, they're sick like every week. And to, to have this expectation that we're going to be able to keep them in some kind of bubble, it's just it's not practical. And I think it's really unhealthy for the mental health. And I, I worry for this entire generation because of the impacts of that. So what's the compromise uh, going forward? A number of things could happen. Either we have a, a, a second wave or a continued wave, whatever. Uh, it completely, we get the vaccine and we're, we're gonna be fine because now we can control it and we can fix people and phew, uh, you know, we, we got through that one. Or there's some sort of hybrid thing going on. What if we're in a situation where this becomes the norm? Uh, how, do we, how, do we deal with, how do we deal with that then? Like, I don't know, what's your, what, what do you, oh, how, how, let's, let's put it this way, you talk about the mask, and, and I share your hesitancy about uh, the effectiveness of the mask to some degree, but uh, what's the comp, what's the compromise? Where do we go? Well, the compromise is certain individuals walking back things that they believed to be true earlier in the pandemic, and we're kind of now just seeing the fallout of what, we had to make decisions quickly at the beginning. Right. I mean, logical, logically think about the continuum of time since the beginning of this. Why mandate masks now? I thought we were supposed to be flattening the curve. If we were going to mandate masks, why didn't we do it back in March? That's a really good point. And I've been wearing a mask since March 14th in public. I was the only person at Zares wearing the mask for the longest time. And um, I've continued to wear a mask, so I'm not not following you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in compliance with the bylaws. I, to me, it's always been about, you know, respecting not potentially spreading it to vulnerable yeah. people with your tools, but it's just, it's, it's getting a little bit loopy, especially when you look at the numbers every day and we're just obsessed with these numbers. But when you extrapolate it out to the population of Ontario, 14 million people and there, how many cases do we have today? Zero. Yeah. And how many it's just, it, it's not jiving with me. Well, that's what, well, I, I that's what I was saying earlier. Any any really banging the drum loudly for the mask wearing thing is, is not credible at the moment because of those of those numbers. So there is there's definitely mixed messages going around, uh, Crystal. And one of the things when I asked you about whether they'd have to wear the mask all day right now, for example, if you go into a, a restaurant or a public space where they have table like whether it's a Tim Hortons even or whatever 
you go in with wearing your mask, you sit down at your table, which are supposed to be automatically socially distanced, and you can take the mask off. So why wouldn't, and, and I understand your concern about whether they can do it properly or not, I get that, but that notwithstanding, why wouldn't they allow the children to, once they're seated at their desk, to take the mask off and be more comfortable? Uh, because they're, they should be socially distanced by being in where they are, right? Is it, or am I, am I dreaming? You're, you're, no, you're absolutely right. And you're pointing out the cognitive distance of this whole <laughs> mandate. Um, I, and even if you look to what uh, Dr. Fauci in the States had said about it, he said that masks are symbolic of being responsible citizens rather than a dependable infection control measure. So I think it's going to this whole where's the science and there's conflicting science and again we'll adhere to it because we're good citizens and it's what we're told to do but i agree with you like if, if you can go into a tim hortons it's the same thing with the gathering of 100 people in public have you been to home depot lately like i'm gathering with more than 100 people in line socially distanced mm -hmm. it's just it's there's so many fallacious arguments on both sides of this thing it's bananas well, obviously, we haven't heard the last of it, and we'll be probably talking more about it. I want to slide into something that you uh, twigged for us to talk about this week, and I'm eager to hear about it. Uh, what is the outdoor challenge? What is that? Oh, okay, good. Good. So I'm excited about this because we're a really outdoorsy family, and um, we, we try to get out a lot, and hiking is really important to us, and getting out into natural spaces, and we're really blessed to live in Niagara because there's so much opportunity here. And uh, Minister Yurik uh, put out the 30 day challenge. So for 30 days in August, so we're three days in now, so we'll call it the 20 state, 27 okay. day challenge for the rest of uh, everyone watching. Um, but it's just get out in nature for 30 minutes, 30 minutes for 30 days. And I think it's really easy to take for granted the natural spaces that we have available to us here. And um, just step back and look outside and you know it's beautiful so i think it's important and it's really helpful um, for mental health for every age group to get out and do that so now do we post I'm, something to show what we did for that 30 minutes yeah so you post like some people are posting a lot of people were at the cottages for their, the long weekend so um floating out on the lake or hiking and then you just like can tag it on social media if you want yeah people love that i'm sure how how has the response i know we're only three days in but how has the response been i think it's been pretty good i i think it's never a bad thing to nudge people to put the screen down and get out and get some fresh air and you don't have to wear a mask outdoors yet so it's still good you can just go outside and breathe and be in nature and heal hey crystal it's kevin here so where are your uh, where are your secret spots in niagara where are you going with the kids they wouldn't be secrets oh. then, would they? Oh, no. Yeah, I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we, uh, we went down to Duff. So Duff's always nice. It's a short little jaunt, especially if it's really hot out and the kids don't want to be walking around a lot. There's a ton of trails here. It so would have been the Dufferin Islands? Them. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, just the local lingo. Sorry? Just the local lingo. You just called it Duff's. Oh, Duff's, yeah. See, in St. Catharines, <laughs> that's a whole different place. <laughs> <laughs> Duff, I called it that, yeah. So we went, um, we go down there. There's tons of trails. We go to Balls Falls sometimes. There's beautiful trails there. Um, we haven't been down to the gorge just because I'm. there's been a lot of rescue missions down there and I get kind of nervous with the the stairs and stuff with the kids. They're young, your kids are younger too. So I try to keep it like flat surface, but like wood ends really nice too. There's a ton of places if you just look up parks. I mean, we're inundated with them here, so. Do you know if, um, uh, is Heartland still open? I guess the outdoors, what? They're, they're probably still open. I like going there. Yeah, we, we went there before. I, I actually forgot about that. I'll have to put it on my list. Yeah. Okay. And then I saw, um, actually Chris Dabrowski posted something on Facebook that he went to Fort Erie to, the old there's like train some kind of train historical train oh, site or something right. like this Didn't outdoors you see, have you also, been there no i haven't and i also saw that uh, chris and fam went and saw goonies on the big screen and i guess had the theater all to themselves <laughs> no. i know now no. i don't know i don't think they rented it i think, think they were the only people that went that day and i don't know why they were showing goonies but like awesome i they're not showing any new movies i think they're like replaying because i i did see that they were having it's like five bucks to go to the movies and they're showing like old harry potter movies and oh, stuff cool. 
home. So if you're comfortable, like if you're comfortable doing that, for Chris, I think there was nobody else in the theater. So him and the boys, Goonies on the big screen. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. It'll be packed next week, though. <laughs> Boy, that brings back a memory for me. I, I'll never, my, my kids were young when uh, Goonies came out. So I'm watching this movie with them, and I was just, I, I, I was dri- driving myself crazy trying to block out the sound of kids screaming. Two hours of kids screaming. It was, drove me absolutely insane. But uh, I, guess oh it was en- I guess it was entertaining for them. You know. yeah. what, what else Actually, is going I have on? a funny Go ahead. I have a funny story about Goonies first, too. All right. So when we were little, um, my one of my grandmothers lived up in Peterborough, like in this really remote log cabin. And like back then, there was a obviously no Internet and B, like no way they had cable. And Goonies was like one of the only VHS videos we had. So we watch it like every night. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, and uh but it was just it was just the sound it was kind of a creative movie but it was just the, just the sound that started to drive me nuts after a while uh, so crystal this means the this means in september that you are going to be able to get back to some sort of professional normalcy uh, what's what's on the what's on the whiteboard coming up for you working on some key projects with that were sort of put off pre-COVID that I'm excited to launch. Um, unfortunately, due to the nature of my work, a lot of it's confidential. I can't talk about it because yeah. it's social media stuff and communications planning, Yep. but probably boring for most people, but I love it and I'm really excited to get back to work. I hope that it's a smooth trans- transition back to school. I do, and we don't have to get into all of this, but I do have some concerns that we may potentially see some pushback from teachers in the fall. Um, the $309 million that the province allocated to get back to school safely didn't include funding for any new teachers. So you can already see in the media, there's some pushback from the unions that they might not feel safe in class sizes, da 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 So my yeah. biggest fear is that it's gonna be a strike situation once we're back for five minutes. Well, um, yeah. But I'm praying that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Obviously, uh, the story is uh, just evolving, and it certainly isn't over, and we'll chat more. Crystal, thanks for coming in again. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. You too. Enjoy being outdoors. Thanks. You too. Bye. All right. So, again, uh, an open-ended story. We Every time something moves forward, we end up with more questions than we have answers, and I suppose that's the stage that we're in. Uh, in this uh, very, very strange time here in Niagara. Now, um, Burdine is a young lady that has a new initiative started as well. We heard Crystal's Outdoor Challenge. This is called the Plastic Bag Project. We have Burdine waiting in the wings, do we not, Kevin? Yeah, we do. Just give us a couple minutes here. We'll line that yeah, up and yeah. uh, maybe the, talk about Sherry Lynn, because Sherry Lynn's going to come on Sherry the program Lynn. in about 10 minutes, and then yep. we'll, uh, we'll get her already. Yeah, um, Sherry Lynn is a lady who posted her story, uh, and it hit uh, Niagara 411. So we obviously were intrigued by it, and we wanted to, to be able to have her tell you her story. And in these days where you hear an awful lot of uh, negative stories, they say that, uh, you know, if it bleeds, it leads. That kind of thing is the old, uh, old press saying from years and years ago so every now and then it's really nice to hear good news stories uh, that renew your faith in the humanity and especially these days when there is an awful lot of cop bashing uh, going on around North America it's uh, especially gratifying and heartwarming when one of those stories involves a police officer and this one does and we'll have Sherilyn tell her own story we got her ready to go Kev thank you very much Hi, Sherry Lynn. How are you? Oh, sorry. This is Berdeen. Oh, Berdeen. Sherry Lynn's coming up. Sorry. <laughs> Berdeen. See, you're getting me confused now. No, I'm getting myself confused. I apologize. Berdeen, how are you? I'm doing good, and how are you doing, Lee? Uh, good, except I have memory lapses, obviously, from time to time, but <laughs> uh, I'm okay. Uh, so, Plastic Bag Project. We were told about this by uh, Gary Wilkins, a fellow we... Uh, talked about uh, Niagara Gorge, the Whirlpool area, and uh, picking up after ourselves down there, et cetera, et cetera. But so, uh, and this is a, a great addendum to that. Tell us about the Plastic Bag Initiative. So the Plastic Bag Project uh, was, st- I literally started it uh, just about 
not less than a week ago actually so it's just funny how everything is just growing so organically and even the opportunity for to come on here today and talk to you so i'm very grateful so a lot of gratitude there um but how it came about is i love the outdoors and my big friend group and my tribe we all love the outdoors as well but there is so much garbage that is constantly in front of us in front of our feet and you don't even have to leave the trails without seeing it so i've always naturally just picked it up and filled up a plastic bag on my way and it doesn't take any extra time my hike is still an hour i still get my great workout in my great exercise in but you're also doing something to contribute and help you know mother nature and the earth because we do need to constantly be aware of that and especially during this time a lot of more people are taking advantage of the outside but they are forgetting that when you do take your garbage in we should be taking it back out as well right absolutely uh one of the things that uh, gary mentioned last week was when you take your own stuff out take something else with you as well <laughs> right uh it's so Okay, so uh, what I wanted to ask you is uh, for the plastic bag project, do, do people log in, do they join your tribe? I think that's a great word these days uh, because we have sort of a tribal thing going on uh, in 2020. So uh, how do we join the tribe? How do we, make our, how do we participate? So it's still uh, a little bit of a work in progress uh, for me on my end and how things are kind of unfolding. Uh, like I said, everything's growing organically. Um, right now, um, there is a Facebook page, which is called The Plastic Bag Project. Mm -hmm. There's also an Instagram page, which is linked, which is also called The Plastic Bag Project. Um, and I have been um, in commutes of setting up more uh, pickup times with bigger groups. Um, but because of this time, we do have to be cautious of it because during COVID, we do have to keep our social distancing. Sure. And, as, uh, but it's something that you can do uh, with a friend as well. Um, love to have the content on social media and even just tag the plastic bag project in it. Uh, send us photos so we can blast it out um, using uh, little hashtags, which us young people love. Um, but like, um, show me your bag or the pickup challenge, um, just to kind of create that fluid movement. That's awesome. So we'll just encourage everybody that's uh, watching the program now and or in the near future to uh, search out Plastic Bag Project on Facebook, participate, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, have a much cleaner Niagara in the near future. Thanks. Thank you very much. See you, Berdine. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk soon, I hope. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Great young lady and a, a, a great uh, project. We have a pretty nice week coming around. Chance of, uh, as you'll see up in the top right corner of your screen, we've got a beautiful day so far today. Maybe some rain, a chance of a thunderstorm later. Same story goes for Tuesday. And then it looks like we're headed for a really great wrap up of the week weather-wise here in Niagara. Humidity is down a bit. So uh, uh, we have uh, a great, great, uh, environmental condition for you to get out there and uh, participate in uh, either the outdoor challenge or the plastic bag project both you can do both these things at once as a matter of fact and while you mentioned the weather lee what's not showing on there we show the week ahead but saturday sunday the long range yeah we're back into around 29 30 degrees okay so you know if you're planning your lives around the weekends and a lot of people do in the summer uh this coming weekend looks terrific it's been uh, it's been quite a summer actually. I know it's been uh, really overshadowed by the whole COVID thing, but weather-wise, we sure can't complain too much about the summer. We got some much-needed rain over the last couple of days, and uh, so we've been we've been okay. Not a lot of super super storm damage. It was crazy uh, yesterday. I know there was actual flooding along areas of the Queen Elizabeth Highway through Toronto around 427 area. The 400 Highway was flooded. Uh, that's not something that you hear of very often. And while we had some wacky weather yesterday, I don't think we suffered any, uh, any serious ramifications of it. So that's, that's good stuff.
The 411 continues. We are fueled by Gales Gas Bars Limited. We appreciate Gales' support uh, more than you know, and uh, we're going to be talking more about their projects in the coming weeks as well and the things that they're involved with. What you want to do is to find out more and more about how you can participate in the Gales Rewards Program. A lot of benefits there. Just go to gales.ca for uh, all the details and uh, participate in that. Niagara supporters, as are we, which is why it's a great great partnership. We are powered by WeStream, proprietor Kevin Jack and Brandon Schramm uh, also appreciate the technology that goes into doing this. Um, and uh, Dave McPerrian, the uh, owner, operator, uh, and your host here at Fiddler's Poor House. We appreciate uh, being able to sit in this beautiful window every Monday morning on St. Paul Street in St. Catharines and uh, chat about the days and weeks events with you. A, a real pleasure to be here. And of course, uh, it wouldn't be complete to do credits without a huge shout out to Nick at Niagara 411. Great partnership uh, with you, Nick, and uh, all of the people that participate with comments and photos and videos on Niagara 411. It's uh, it's really working well. Our, uh, our viewership and participation levels were through the roof last week, so that's kind of gratifying to see. And uh, we appreciate your continued support as well. Sherry Lynn Evans is uh, going to be joining us right away. And I was uh, talking about the, the story that she had for us, the, the thing that she experienced at Giant Tiger Store in St. Catharines over on Welland Avenue this week. And I mean, I could tell the story. I could read the story. You might have already read it, but I really wanted to meet Sherry Lynn because it's very rare that people go out of their way to uh, to make their stories known, and uh, and she did in this case. Sherry Lynn, good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you. How you doing? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? I'm well. Where are you right now? I'm in my backyard. <laughs> oh, looks like a nice backyard. Well, it's a beautiful day. It is. So. Tell us, your st t tell us your story. It's a, it's a great one, and I uh, would love to hear it in your own words. Okay. Um, so we started crafting yesterday, my mother and I. And, of course, we got hungry. So we're like, why don't we go get pancakes? And because it was a long weekend, we decided to go to Giant Tiger, thinking that Walmart or a bigger chain uh, store would, would be overpacked with people. And we're kind of avoiding large crowds right now with COVID going on. So we decided to, to go down to Giant Tiger. And, of course, when you go shopping, you just don't buy pancake mix. You buy a whole bunch of other lovelies. <laughs> so we were at the checkout line, and um, we did separate checkouts. And so I went first, and then she went um, to a different line. And I was finished, and as she was waiting for the customer ahead of her, I kind of crept up beside her, you know, just talking around. And then she's like, hey, Sherry, there's an officer coming in. So, of course... I look, so I'm, because I'm directed right at the door, and then my mother gets called up to the cash, so she's talking, and I overhear the officer ask the employee at the front door where the shoes are, and following the officer was a young gentleman, and I looked down at him, and he was wearing no shoes, and instantly I thought, this officer is going to buy him a pair of shoes, so that was just what I was thinking, so I told mom, and I'm like, mom, I think this officer is going to buy this gentleman a pair of shoes, like how nice is that? So she finished up her shopping and we weren't really sure that's what he was doing. And she pushed me on my walker outside the store and she really wanted to go and thank this officer and find out if that's what he was actually doing. Like it made her mission. She mm -hmm. left me outside of the entrance. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. That's just, just, just some of our local uh, flora and fauna here. Right. Um, just so that um, she should go and personally thank the officer and, and find out if that's truly what he was going to do. Right. And sure enough, um, so I waited outside in the parking lot and I was sitting on my walker. I was waiting for my mother. When she came out, she's like, that's exactly what he did. He bought him some shoes. He also offered, like, he asked the gentleman if he wanted anything else. Like, I'm not sure I wasn't in the store of what they grabbed, but he came out with a bag. And so when my mom left the store, I was sitting outside and I was like, not too many people actually appreciate what other people do. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's it's not that they don't appreciate it; they don't they don't spread it around. It's it's all negativity, and it's it's all just bad bad news. And I'm like, this needs to get shown. Like people need to recognize that a police officer, especially right now, 
needs to get recognized that he's a human being and he literally paid out of pocket for this young man's you know the things that he purchased for him and it was the act of kindness that my mother and I like it totally made our day there's you know, the, like he needs to get recognized there's the officer on the uh, on the screen right there um, what was the reaction or could you tell what the reaction was uh, of the young man that the officer helped um, he, he was glowing uh, I actually we had a conversation with him um, because we, when they walked out of the store we made sure to approach them both in a nicely manner and ask them a few questions and of course I had both their permissions to take that photo or else I wouldn't have sure um, and he was and and he and I also asked permission for them you know if I could share the story because like I said it's it's amazing but the young man was so grateful and he even said in his own words that like you know there are some really nice human beings out there and nobody really shares the nice stories and he was thankful and he was very polite like he called me ma'am and we had a nice conversation and just the whole situation was was memorable and I'll never forget that situation like you had to kind of be there to feel to feel the feelings that he was feeling and that everybody was in that well, group um, you mentioned the officer's name in your post and unfortunately I can't remember it Do you remember his name yes it's Chris Morin Chris Morin officer Chris Morin yes. okay uh, well officer Morin um, kudos to you and uh, I'm glad that you happened to come along Sherry Lynn and her mom because uh, to go to your point Sherry Lynn we are we obviously uh, have a, a lack of passing it on or passing it forward uh, as they say and we're really glad that you did this because uh, again to go to your point uh, especially police officers and other law enforcement and uh, official people need whatever support we can uh, give them today because they're they're tough times in some spots right and and it's not like he wanted credit you know like it's just like a lot of people I see posts of a lot of people taking selfies helping other people like you don't need to do that you just need to be a nice person in general why do you need to take a selfie and post it but because the officer and even if it wasn't an officer, I would have, I, my mother and I would have done the same thing. We would have done exactly the same thing, but it just happened to be an officer. And, and it was just, it was perfect timing. But, um, like, I can't remember where I, where I was going with this. <laughs> That's okay. I, it's just, <laughs> but, uh, it's just the, it's just the fact that, yeah. But people, people like you are important too. So, um, we would encourage to, uh, instead of, what often people do is accentuating on the negative because that's what stands out to most people is is look for those positive things that happen out there be aware of what's going on around you because there are some there are some nice things that as to go to your point sherry lynn that, that get overlooked and get forgotten right well thank yeah, you oh, I, I remember now. okay go <laughs> ahead go ahead okay quickly um, it, it's the fact that um, the officer didn't want credit like back to the selfies like some people take selfies and they posted online saying, oh look, I, I gave this guy money. But the officer didn't do that. He just wanted to help this guy out of pure heart. And that's why I said, well, you know, I'm going to credit you. My mother's gonna credit you. I want everybody to know that you deserve credit because my mother's always said, um, when credit, like give credit where credit deserves. Well, good for you. Uh, and I'm really glad you shared it with us in person today because it's important that we, I think, acknowledge people like you that take notice of these things. So it's, it's, a, bit of a, it, it's a bit of a big circle that we need to complete. And uh, thank, you for, thank you for doing that, for, for the officer uh, as well as, uh, as for the rest of us. Thanks, Sherry Lynn. Thank you. Take care. You too. All right. Yeah, we will. Thank you very much. Um, another contributor to the to the program from a story that appeared on Niagara 411, and hopefully we've been able to pay it forward a little bit as well to let you know about things that are going on out there, uh, both on the plus side and on the minus side. So to our guest today, we're getting just about uh, ready to bring this to a close. Uh, to our guest today, uh, before we run out of time, I want to thank them very very much for joining us Nigel of Nigel's cheap vlogs I'm sure we'll chat with him again sometime in the not too distant future Crystal Caputo Niagara mom and business person uh, and citizen uh, and uh, purveyor of the outdoor challenge you can uh, check that out Sherry Lynn 
We just talked to her, Sherry Lynn Evans, with the Feel Good Story of the Week, uh, as well as Burdine and the Plastic Bag Project. Search that out on Facebook and participate if you can. It's been a busy yeah. show, Lee. Yeah, it's been a busy show. There's one thing before we go, though, that I want to mention. I wanna, we we want to help this uh, young lady find what is perhaps... Uh, her Prince Charming or the love of her life. I don't think we could do this show uh, and and miss out on this story because here's another story. Uh, I believe this young lady was in, we'll call this misconnections, right? That's what we're calling it, misconnections. Well, th this is a prime example of a misconnection. Uh, this young uh, woman was in, I think it was Costco, Kevin, and uh, she happened to become aware of a gentleman that was also there, someone that she did not know. But uh, I guess uh, her instincts told her she wanted to get to know him better. Uh, he was about six foot four, salt and pepper hair, uh, a tattoo sleeve, uh, and her name is Joe Chloe. She's looking for this guy. And apparently, as the story goes, from what I can recall, uh, they kept sort of almost running into each other in the store. There was some, you know, the eye contact uh, noticed from across the room, and they, they kept sort of becoming uh, in the general area of each other during their shopping experience. And at one point in time, they spoke. Uh, he gave her his phone number, and she lost it. What? I know! I know! <laughs> How do you lose the telephone number of the love of your life, maybe? So, here's what, uh, and the, this, the story appeared on, uh, on Niagara 411. And uh, we're trying to, the, the social community of Niagara is attempting to bring these two uh, potential soulmates together. Okay, so six foot four, if you're the guy, six foot four, salt and pepper hair and a tattoo sleeve. There can't be too many of you that, uh, that, that fit that description that we're at Costco on this day. I mean, that sort of narrows the funnel. Uh, so we're hoping that if you have seen or know of or even are this gentleman, uh, unfortunately, your, your telephone number is blowing around the parking lot at uh, Costco somewhere. Now the kudos to uh, the Niagara four one one fan base. Yeah, because they just had a lot of fun in the comments. <laughs> Nobody goes to Costco to get just one man. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I would try a sample in the store before buying. That is funny. If you find him and things don't work out, I heard Costco has a fantastic return policy. <laughs> that is. Uh, that's good. Yeah, my friends and I call it the two hundred dollar store. You can't. You, you, you can't go in and spend 10 bucks and, and leave. It's absolutely impossible. Now, Lee, speaking of kind of love and connections and things like that, I didn't really prep you for this, but let's see if I can pull it up. I'm taken, Kevin. I'm on, taken. Uh, on the weekend, okay. we stream uh, our company, the, the company that powers Livestream Niagara and provides this technology. We yeah. are a four-hire live streaming company, and these days we are getting a lot of inquiries about weddings, mm -hmm. and we did one on Saturday. It was Gabby and Adam's wedding over at Club Roma. And you know what, I just want to see if I can uh, if I can pull up some of that stuff for you here. Excellent, yeah. And just take a peek inside a wedding. They've, they've got a great little back garden area over at Club Roma. There was a lot of, um, a lot of construction, right? New apartment buildings. Yeah, being, so I've seen that, yeah. So they used to have a spot where people got married kind of on the south side, and that's now been shifted over to the west side and behind the... Uh, Okay. In behind the soccer fields, but here I will. All right, yeah, because I've been to really. a couple of uh, weddings at Club Roma. I was unaware that they switched the, the location. Yeah, so there you go. Here's us kind of just milling around ahead of time. Fourteen people in attendance. If anybody was wondering, isn't that something? I think you could legally now go up to a hundred. If you maintain physical distance, I was going to say, if you have the proper conditions, yes. But, you know, weddings need to be planned so far in advance. So I think they were planning for probably stage one, which was 10 people, and then likely added a few others. Yeah, and, as, and, as we went to stage two and, and I would stage think three. in a situation like that, the people that would be invited are people that are already in their bubble anyway. 
Yeah, for the most part. This was real close family. Yeah. So yeah. as a result, we were more than happy to, to be hired to stream it for them. We had people watching in Slovakia, in Peru, all corners of the world. Uh, her family is very far-reaching, as are her loved ones. So, you know, if you, uh, if you know somebody that's about to get hitched or if there's somebody that doesn't know what they're going to do in COVID, give WeStream a call. We're right here in Niagara. We do tremendous work. And, of course, Lee, this video is instantly archived. They have this. Forever. So it kind of doubles as live streaming and videography. Yeah. And here, we'll skip ahead here. to. Some and if you've stuff. ever watched one of these uh, events uh, from somebody that was just trying to walk around uh, and, and do it like a um, one of the cousins of a cousin, uh, and you know what the quality of those things turn out like. Uh, you get what you get. Say no more. But uh, everything that uh, everything that uh, WeStream does is uh, top-notch first class. Yeah, right. we got to at least get to this part because they knock it out of the park on the... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I now introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. And I'll leave their last names out just for a little bit of anonymity. But uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gabby and Adam. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, I think this is it right here. With the power invested in me, the province of Ontario... They wrote their own vows. It was real nice. It was, you know, very intimate, of course, but uh, everybody had big smiles on their faces, and uh, it was just, it was nice. It was That's sort nice. of a neat pergola-type uh, arrangement they have there. Yeah, it is. Like I said, yeah. they, they really did a good job, and so I'm just skipping ahead here because I really want... I mean, that's... that's This is the payoff, right? This is... <laughs> Come on, guys. We almost there? Yeah, here we go. All right. Sorry, Lee. I know the suspense to watch. There we go. I've been on the edge of my seat wondering what would happen next. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to give away the ending. Well, no, you can't You can't be a spoiler. Spoiler alert. Yeah, Kiss there coming. You go. All so right. There you go. That's what I was up to on Saturday. Very good. Very, very. That was a warm day, too, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. But luckily, some clouds rolled in. It was in the afternoon as well, so... Lots of tall trees around there, provided some shade. It was good. Very good, very good. Uh, yeah, so uh, check out uh, check out WeStream. If you have any sort of uh, event or celebration, it uh, could be any anything coming up. Um, in these days where people cannot gather, they can gather. I remember there was a photography, there was a, uh, I don't know, some photograph company, some camera company years ago, had a, had a slug line on all of their advertising. It was the next best thing to being there. Remember that one? Yeah, I do I think it was Kodak that. or something like that. I think so. Uh, well, WeStream is like being there. It's not even the next best thing. You are there. Uh, and uh, the same thing with this show. You are here every day. This is live. Uh, it is, uh, as is painfully obvious, it's unrehearsed. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as per usual, you are always welcome to join us. This has been Episode 8. I hope your Family Day Holiday Monday is going well. If you shared a portion of it with us, that's awesome. And uh, we're also uh, archived on Facebook on Livestream Niagara and Niagara 411 at any time. You want to go back and check something out or any of the previous episodes, please feel free to do so. Once again, we thank our, uh, our partners in all of the Scales Gas Bars Limited, the Fiddler's Poor House, we stream at Niagara 411, and to our guests again, thanks for being here. We shall do it all again for Episode 9 on the 10th of August, a week from today at 10 a.m. Hope you can be here. Have yourselves a great week, everybody.